there was this great study years ago where these nuns, I mean, they're all in their 90s. They were all like Betty White, just wonderful sense of humor, always active, great diet, all this kind of stuff. When they died, they, they performed autopsies on all these nuns in their 90s. They all had Alzheimer's. However, they had built up so many additional brain cells. They had such high reserves that they weren't symptomatic. You're listening to Entrepreneur Journeys, where I share insights and strategies based on owning and managing businesses while traveling and living on three continents. I also interview business owners about their journey, what they learned along the way, and how that can help you with your business growth. For more resources to accelerate your entrepreneur journey, head over to gapologist.com, where I share resources, events, community, and more. I'm your host, Joe Matz. Let's get started. Hello, hello. And today I have with us a brain health expert. Scott Warwick helps humans to protect, rewire, and repair their brains so that they can live better and more successfully and not be subject to many of the mental um, brain difficulties. But we'll get into all that. And Scott, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. Anytime somebody gives me a chance to talk about making people better, I love it. I know you're very passionate about that, and you wrote a book about brain health, and we'll get into all of that. But, Scott, for our listeners, where do you hail from today? I'm actually in uh, the Columbus, Ohio area over on the east side. I live in a little suburb called Reynoldsburg. Reynoldsburg. And, oh, it's, it's nice and handy because I'm literally $25, $35 from the airport. So, uh, yeah, I travel quite a bit, but uh, born and raised in central Ohio. Oh, wow. Okay. Very good. That's a, that's a nice area. Yeah. Very, very family oriented, calm, but we, we like it. Yeah, <laughs> that's important. And Scott, so you're doing so much with, with the brains today, but was, was there any indication when you were in high school or, or even younger that you were going to become a brain expert? No, uh, actually, this was not a direction that I intended to go down at all. I'm actually by training. I'm a human resource guy. Uh, my master's is in human resources. I've been a human resource professional for 41 years, and I've been a practicing employment attorney for 27 years. And in 1993, my oldest son was born, and and uh, there were some little peculiar things that were going on with him. And we finally got a diagnosis of, at the time, that was called Asperger's autism. Mm. So we were told at the turn of the 2000s that that's just the way he is. That's just the way he's wired. There's very little that you can do. It, since it's his hard wiring, that's pretty much the way he's going to be for the rest of his life. If it was chemical, we could do more with drugs. Well, I was like, this is just unacceptable. So I started doing my own research and good friend of mine put me in touch with the Amen clinics, Dr. Daniel Amen and the work that he's been doing with spec scans and the research that I uncovered and understand, uh, I'll never rely on anything that I couldn't document and enter into evidence in court. So I found out that everything that our high-priced $400, $500 an hour board-certified psychiatrists were, was telling us was wrong. Wow. You can rewire the human brain. You can, uh, you grow 100,000 new neurons in your brain every month. Mm. And if you treat them right, they can grow 10 to 100 sprouts. And But if you live like a normal American, the way we live today, you kill about 85,000 brain cells a day. So... Uh, took my son in 2006 to get his brain scanned, a nuclear brain scan, and it watched him think for a 20 minute lapsed period. And we had these photographs to show us this, these are where the hot spots are. This is what you got to work on. And so for the next two years, we worked diligently, uh, diet, exercise, vitamins, all kinds of stuff, therapies. Took him back in 2008 and got his brain scan to see, okay, how much progress have we made? Where are we? 
and his brain was about 15 percent repaired 15 percent better which so which the experts had said there wasn't anything that could be done right so 15 percent was absolutely amazing yeah his coordination like one of the problems was his cerebellum and you want the cerebellum at the base of your skull to burn hot as hot as you can get it on both sides evenly mm. well his was not burning evenly and so we put him through something called the interactive metronome which is what they will often put stroke victims through and it rewired tremendously actually he increased his coordination by about 800 percent wow uh, just by his beginning and ending numbers at the same time my wife told me she said oh while we're there you're getting scanned and i said no i don't get scanned. we're here no no she goes you're nuts you're getting scanned i think that's that's really funny that your your wife oh. asked what what were there any issues that she particularly pointed to that, that oh yeah yeah <laughs> ocd you just don't get over things you obsess over things uh oh. anger all kinds of things and um and so i got my scan in 2008 and the intake is about six hours of intake it's not just the scan okay but the scans and the intake, they told me, well, you know, you look at the scans, you listen to your intake, you got raging post-traumatic stress disorder. And I will tell you, 30% of everybody in America has that. Yeah. And, um, and last year in 2022, we set a record for attorney suicides. Wow. And I always love this because I'll hear, well, that's a high stress position. Baloney. So is dentistry. So if you're a surgeon, OK, so our air traffic controllers, nobody's got the suicide rate like we do. And it's basically the way we treat each other. Attorneys attach each other like rabid dogs. And I should say litigators. Mm. Well, I got on my horse. Michael and I, we changed our lifestyle. Uh, rule number one, got as many jackasses out of my life as humanly possible. Um, and I started to discover how cortisol and adrenaline, the fight or flight response works in your body. If your car won't start, that's distressful. If you have a lot of work, that's distressful. If you have someone bullying you at work, that will release three times the cortisol and adrenaline in your body. Hmm. It's three times worse than other types of things. Because if you think your body, you think your life is in danger, Fred Flintstone had to move, he had to run. And that's what happens to us. Sure, Mike and I, went back to uh, the Amen clinics in 2020, did follow-up scans. My brain is about 85% cured, gone. My OCD is completely gone. Hmm. All of the hot spots in my temporal lobes are completely gone. Uh, my panic attacks are now back down to more like just apprehension. Uh, Michael's brain is rewired about 75%. Now, this is a kid who the psychiatrist told us he might need a special high school. He might not be mainstreamed. Uh, he probably won't go to college. Well, he graduated with honors from Ohio State and then graduated from Roosevelt University in Chicago with his master's degree in psychology with a 3.91. Hmm. And today he's a behavioral specialist working here in Columbus, Ohio area. So my whole passion now is I do a lot of coaching. It's part of my practice for people in their level of emotional intelligence. If you have a damaged brain, and just keep this in perspective, probably 80 or 90% of everybody you know does. Uh, approximately 80% of everybody in this country who has prescription drug coverage is on psychiatric medications. Yeah. Now, yeah. this is the thing, is nothing wrong with psychiatric medications, I'm a big fan. But if you went to the doctor's office and said, oh my God, my foot hurts, my foot really hurts. All right, well, they take an X-ray, it's broken. All right, got a broken foot. The doctor gives you painkillers to kill the pain. Mm -hmm. And he says, yep, there you go. And you're like, are we gonna do anything else? Nope, just take the painkillers. Well, now you're gonna walk around on a broken foot. You're probably gonna displace the fracture. It's gonna get worse. And pretty soon the pain medication doesn't work anymore. That's exactly what happens with the human brain. Uh, we medicate it, which is great, which is going to suppress the symptoms. It doesn't cure it. If you keep treating your brain like a soccer ball, like the way we eat, the way we treat each other, 
you got to drink half your weight in ounces in water every day. I got four of these 32 ounces, man, I will down that every day. Hmm. Your brain will rewire itself naturally. But most of us, we, 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 we treat our brains horribly and we wonder why the mental health of our, or of our co country is going down the toilet. And, and I will tell you, it's amazing to me. I do these I do these sessions all over the country, and actually, I've got several state and and uh, national conferences coming up in the fall, starting in August. Really, nobody's talking about the brain. We talk about mental health. We talk about this, like as if your mind is separate from your body. It's not. If you treat your brain the same as you treat your feet, and I can tell you, we spend a lot of money on our feet. Okay, <laughs> so. If we take care of our our brain and do the things that I talk about in the book, one day you might not need your medications anymore, and you certainly are not going to have to start increasing them. And so that's my message. So, oh yeah, I mean, I got a passion for this because I see people in pain everywhere. Yeah, and well, they, honestly, they don't know what to do. Your passion is obvious, and it and it comes through. You mentioned a number of things that I want to touch on here. Mm -hmm. and lastly. You, you mentioned, it sounds like what you're saying is people are working on the symptoms and yes. not the cause. Exactly. And what yes. you're doing is, is getting to the root cause, which, oh, is, absolutely. which is the and, wiring of the brain, the synopsis, yeah. the, the electrical connections, if I can, I'm, you know, as a layman and, and not someone who has studied the brain. That's perfect. Yeah. That's, no, that, you got it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we always hear about the left brain and, and the right brain and mm. getting them working together. But I yeah. haven't heard about the heat sensor um, that you talked about and, and the hot spots in the brain. Now, that, yeah. that's very interesting. Yeah, because what happens is, and you got to think, um, when Fred Flintstone, thousands of years ago, would go into fight or flight from an animal chasing him or another human chasing him or something like this, uh, he would run that off or he would fight off that adrenaline and cortisol. He wouldn't go sit at his desk, okay? So we release all this cortisol and adrenaline in our body. That right there is your number one health threat. So we're not we're not yeah. expelling it from our body. If we come and sit at the desk, we're kind of, it, it's kind of coming back in, like, 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 like I wanna say like a circular motion, it's coming back yeah. into us. Yeah, think of it like releasing three times the gasoline throughout your body. It's your number one threat of heart disease. Number one, worse than smoking. And the reason being is when you go into fight or flight, you're going to release like a bully is going to attack me. I'm going to release all this cortisol and adrenaline three times as much as when my car won't start. Mm -hmm. And so, first of all, uh, that's going to raise my blood pressure. Right. The adrenaline is going to make the red blood platelets sticky. So now you got the Indy 500 going through your blood vessels. All kinds of bad things are going to happen. First and foremost, those red blood cells that are so sticky now are going to crash into what we call the bifurcations in your arteries, the, the splits. And it's going to smash and destroy those. And you're going to start to get arterial sclerosis. Other red blood cells are going to make it through and they're going to go crashing into your heart and into your heart valves and they will destroy it. At the same time, 20%, now get this, your brain only makes up 2% of your body weight. 20% of everything in your blood is going to go to your brain. And your brain feels like soft room temperature butter. You will damage it right now. Your brain is the first organ to go. It's the first. So you are literally, and this is what's really important, you are literally going to inflame it you're gonna burn it like blisters. And when I talk about this red inflammation, what I'm talking about is your brain is on fire. You've mm -hmm. burned it with your thoughts. And so what we gotta do, first of all, stop doing that, okay? Second, you gotta drink your water, you gotta eat the right food, you gotta hang around the right people to release what we call eustress chemicals, which is dopamine, which is, is oh my gosh, serotonin, telomerase, telomerase, uh, is this goo that gets you know, uh, secreted in your body and it finds the DNA cells and surrounds them and protects them from unraveling. You get younger. Okay, so we're getting very technical here. Um, 
let's let's bring it back down and mm-hmm. let's say so you get bullied at work and your yeah. normal reaction is to go to your desk and maybe soak a little bit or get get into your work yes i'm thinking there's a better thing to do than that yeah and now first and foremost the time to be able to handle stress distress is before it happens okay uh meditation is a big part of it because when you meditate again Whatever you do, whatever you subject your brain to, that's how your brain will wire. That's Mm -hmm. how it will rewire. So when you meditate, you're actually building up the frontal lobes. You're actually increasing your control. Navy SEALs do this for their training to get in to become a Navy SEAL. And by doing that, they've increased their pass rate from 25% to 33%. Yeah, I'm a big fan of meditation. I've been meditating regularly since 1983. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's great therapy. It it really is. It really yeah. is, and there are many types of meditation also, which mm-hmm. is probably a, a lot of um. That, that's a source for another whole conversation. <laughs> yeah, but the main thing, all I really care about, is that someone is doing it because it's that it's that quiet time, it's that breathing, mm-hmm. and the basic fundamentals should about be you know very similar. Okay, so. Um, you're drinking your water, you're doing all these types of things. So first of all, that's going to be easier to dispel. But if, you, if your gut's really churning, it's like, hey, this is a good time, to, if you can, in your job, to take a take a walk. Hmm. take a. When you get home, don't lay on the couch. Go out and shoot some hoops. Hang out with your dog. You got to do these things because it's all chemical management. You will never get rid of stress. So what you want to do is say, well, you got to get rid of your stress. The only time you get rid of your stress is when you're dead. That's it. Okay, that's it. So what you got to do is you got to displace the distress with the eustress. And eustress is is stronger than the distress. So you, you got to knock that out by doing things that you like to do, eating a good diet. And so that's how you start to rebuild your brain. But I will tell you point blank, if you work in a toxic workplace and the culture will not change, get out. Get out. Yeah. So yeah. can can you give me a quick definition of eustress? Well, eustress is the chemical cocktail that's released in your body. It's just a term we use uh, for to describe all these really positive chemicals. Dopamine, oxytocin, uh, telomerase that I mentioned. We've all heard of endorphins. Yes. Okay. okay. Those so, types of chemicals. So okay. exercise brings that yeah, on. Those, Love making yeah. brings that oh, on. Oh yeah. Uh, Dr. Amen says you should you should have a serious partner, uh, you know, a committed partner, uh, two or three times a week. Okay. So you know if, if that's a problem, then you get a note from your doctor and show it to your spouse or significant other <laughs> and daughters. Okay. Uh, but no, no, all the whatever's good for your heart. So He's petting good. your dog, staying on the couch with with my dog, puts his yeah. puts his head on my on my thigh as I'm watching TV yeah. and I'm petting him and yeah. right, yeah. right. Oh no, you got it right there. We've got at one point we had four cats and three and two dogs. Oh wow! And so uh, they're fantastic therapy. Yes. Uh, and the studies that are coming out. I mean, since I've done my research and put out the book in the last several years, more and more and more studies have come out about work being therapy Hmm. when you go to work and you work with good positive people you don't work with somebody who is going to attack you just because they disagree with you okay but you work with positive people you work in a safe environment where it's safe to be different okay uh if you work in that environment that's therapy that's therapy right that is therapy yeah and you know it's therapy because the whole day just shoots by and you loved it and the next thing you know it's time to go home right right yeah, yeah that that's fantastic right. yep oh yeah that's yeah. healthy yeah so I, I want to touch back something you said in the very beginning scott is that we create the brain creates a hundred thousand what was that uh neuron new brain cells every month but you have baby stem cells in your brain every month a hundred thousand every month hundred thousand but you destroy eighty five thousand a day if you don't take care of it. Okay, so I'm I'm no mathematician. Yeah. But it sounds like we're losing a whole lot more than what we're building and what we're creating. Well, when when I was dealing with jackasses all day, 
when I drank pop all day, when I was overweight, okay? When all these things were happening, okay? Uh, when I didn't go and do my photography and, and all these other things that I enjoy, yeah, I'm killing 85,000 a day. I ain't killing 85,000 a day now. I'm, I'll tell you, uh, you will never meet somebody that will tell you to go to hell faster than me. Uh, I fire clients. You know, I love this because people think that just because they pay you that you'll work with them. No, because hmm. I'll tell you, one thing we've discovered recently is when you're flooding your body with all that adrenaline and cortisol, cortisol is a direct cause of Alzheimer's. Direct hmm. cause. And I'll tell you right now, well, I can't quit my job. I can't do this. Well, see what happens. If somebody smokes cigarettes for 40 years and they got lung cancer, and then they're shocked that they got lung cancer, when you just look at them and shake your head, yeah, of course all does. Right. So there was this great study years ago where these nuns, I mean, they're all in their 90s. They were all like Betty White, just wonderful sense of humor, always active, great diet, all this kind of stuff. When they died, they they performed autopsies on all these nuns in their 90s. They all had Alzheimer's. However, they had built up so many additional brain cells. They had such high reserves mm. that they weren't symptomatic. Interesting. And I'll tell you, yeah. yeah, I'll tell you, nobody listening to this has more Alzheimer's seeds in their brain right now than me. Okay? And why do, you, why do you say that? because of the way my brain was in 2008. It was a mess. I had destroyed it with cortisol and adrenaline just from the abuse that I was taking. Mm. Uh, well, I'll tell you right now, I drink my water, I eat my salads, I hang around good people. I will ditch people when they are just nothing but caustic, when right. they're toxic people, and sometimes they're relatives, okay? And I'll tell you, I'm growing 100,000 every month, and I can grow a million connections every month. So you do that across 5, 10, 15, 20 years. I intend to have so many reserves that when that my Alzheimer's will never become symptomatic. Hmm. Okay, so there's an important lesson in there in that the way we are treating in today's society is worse than ever. Worse than ever. Oh, there's, finished- there's so much conflict. There's so much there's so much division out there. It it is crazy. Yeah. yeah. And and I'll tell you, a lot of the classes I teach, when some it's okay to disagree. It's okay. It's okay to be white. It's okay to be black. It's okay to be Jewish. It's okay to be pro-choice. It's okay to be pro-life. We do not and should not attack and cancel somebody just because they disagree with your narcissistic opinion. I, I really, agree with you hundred percent. So, are we so narcissistic that no one can disagree with us? And the answer is yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. 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 So But that's I'll that's the heart of discussion. Yeah. That's the heart of of, of Socratic debate. Mm-hmm. You want to have intelligent conversations and respect that someone disagrees with you because my ideas and my view of life and how life should be lived comes from my history and my journey through this life on this planet and it's not the same as yours and it's not the same as anyone else's right and i remember a day when it was okay to disagree yes and today, and I'll tell you, it's amazing that you, you mentioned the Socratic method. They cannot even do the Socratic method in law school now. Uh, Stanford University, uh, Stanford, I think it was Stanford. Uh, I don't want to misquote, um, but they had a federal judge in and this federal judge who apparently was a rather conservative judge was speaking to the class and the class, they acted like five-year-olds booing this guy. I mean, and, and the diversity dean said she supports the students because they disagree with this judge. And I'm like, this this is horrible. Uh, here's a lot of people who just need spanked and not in a good way. Uh, <laughs> you're an embarrassment to yourself and the human race. He has his opinion. And I will fight to the death to his right to his opinion because you take his opinion away, you can take my opinion away. Right. You have a decorum. You treat people with respect, and just because someone disagrees with you, so what? 
who are you? You feel the ego and the emotional child coming out. Yeah. We are reverting. And I will tell you, we're teaching this and this is killing workplaces. I will tell you right now. Most, I'll tell you, I, I had a, a client I was working with, a 28 year employee, been there forever. And we put this stuff in place. You will treat each other with respect. Here's how you will conduct yourself. It's okay to disagree. We encourage that sort of thing. This guy wouldn't do it. Okay. I coached him, coached him again, written warning, fired him. Yep. Yeah. I've had to do the same, Scott, yeah, with yes. the employees that I've had. Yeah. I yeah. had to do the same. I had to do the same with, with someone I've been friends with for years and years and years. And we disagreed on a point. Yeah. And he attacked me. He attacked mm -hmm. my sense of being. He attacked my my sense of who I am. He attacked me personally. Right. And I said, "Can't can't we get back to what we're discussing?" No. He and I had to. I had yeah. to. Um, I don't know how to say this. I had to shut him off. I had to. Just I, yeah. I haven't spoken with him in years. And it, it, it's it a shame. Talks. But I I don't and need I'm that you right now. In and I've sent over forty people that I'm coaching that are in really bad shape. And I'm coaching people because I'm usually the only thing standing between them and the door. Hmm. Their behavior is so bad. Uh, all, all of them, over 40, were just like me. They thought they were fine, and they were burning red hot. And I'll tell you, when you show somebody, according to my wife, how nuts you really are, you get religion. <laughs> and you start to realize it's not everybody else. It's me. Hmm. And I don't want to be like that anymore. And when you start to realize that this is what you need to do to fix this, I'll tell you, uh, they're all doing much better. Would you like to get in front of more of your ideal clients and at the same time, build your brand and create evergreen content? Well, you can do that with podcast guesting. This very moment, you're listening to a podcast that may have been published today or three weeks ago or three years ago. In a very real sense, you're engaging with the speakers, hopefully enjoying yourself and learning something new at the same time. And you're getting to know the guests and how they help their clients, their customers, and the problems that they solve. You may even be their ideal client and want to learn more about them and download one of their free resources you can find in the show notes or maybe even become a client of theirs. See, when you're a guest on a podcast, you will enjoy that same kind of engagement. It is perhaps the easiest, most cost-effective way to get in front of new audiences. Learn how you can be a guest on the right podcast and engage with your ideal clients with the free resources available at gapologist.com. So without a, going to the doctor and, and sitting through whatever is six or eight hours there and, and getting the brain scans, is there any way to diagnose or, or know what's happening with your brain and what state you're in? Oh, yeah. And this is the norm. And just to give you a great example, I got this woman I'm coaching right now, and her name is Cindy. Wonderful, wonderful lady. And this is the norm. Okay. And understand, a normal, healthy brain is Betty White. Okay. Betty White. I'm a great. big fan. Big fan of Betty oh, White. Loved Betty <laughs> She's White. adorable. Just loved and, and the neurons in your brain actually have a life expectancy of 120 years. Hmm. So you should never lose your short-term memory. If you lose your short-term memory, it's because you treated your brain like a soccer ball and you burned it out. Hmm. Okay, so basically, I'll talk to folks. And Cindy was a great, great example. She would sit there and she, she was so ADD. And you just spot it because she sat there like a poodle. Okay, she just couldn't sit still. And she's just like this. And, and she would jump from train of thought to train of thought to train of thought. And I started asking her, I'm trying to coach her. And I just asked her, I said, no, oh, just slow down. How do you sleep? How well do you sleep? And she goes, oh, I, I just don't sleep. I said, that is the number one, number one sign that you've damaged your brain. Mm. And so we sit and we talked and I said, okay, here's what we're going to do. First of all, I want you to go get your full physical. OK, because I've caught people who are diabetic and they didn't know it. Wow. Yeah. Your brain runs on glucose. Your body runs on glucose. So guess what? If you're diabetic, you're going to be grouchy. Thyroid, menopause, menopause. So you want to make sure that your your hormones are in balance. She started drinking her water, half her weight in ounces every day, changed her complete diet. She is taking her dog for walks. OK, and she was really crushed 
because she just come off her second divorce. Hmm. Okay, so uh, just make a long story short, no scans. She knows she's got these problems. Come December, now this was May of 2022, December of 2022, we're sitting there just before Christmas. She's calm, talking to me, staying on her train of thought. And I just started talking. I said, well, how are you sleeping? She goes, oh, I'm just sleeping great. I'm just sleeping wonderful. And she'd taken a couple of vacations. And there's a study that just came out this year that taking vacations makes you more productive when you get back to work because your mental state. Mm -hmm. And so what she's done is she has flooded her body with all of these eustress chemicals. Okay. Interestingly enough, she took care of the bullies. She had 10 employees working for her. She coached and coached and warned and warned and fired two of them. The other employees were so thrilled that they picked up the slack. They didn't have to hire new, new people. <laughs> Thank you and, for firing oh, yeah. those people. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's when you throw the party. Yes. And I said, you know, the pain that these two horrible human beings and understand these people are brain damaged. That's not normal behavior. They're not Betty White. Uh, and I wasn't coaching them, but I would have told them the same thing. You got to do this. You got to do this. You got to do this or your lives are going to be miserable. Hmm. Well, today she's so much calmer. She's very successful. She's still now. Uh, six months later, she still hasn't had to replace those two people. So you see, most of my people do not need any type of medical adjustments. What they need to do is they need to start taking care of their brain the same way you take care of your heart. Okay, whatever's good for your heart is good for your brain. So you do the right diet. And, and we have a lot of discussion on that. Actually, half the book is all about this is what you got to do. Here's what Michael did. Here's what I did to repair our brains. And they're not the same. Hmm. Michael likes to go long distance running. I don't like the impact. I like a glider. I like shooting hoops in the backyard. And I am the absolute worst basketball player you've ever seen in your life. Okay. I like to play soccer with the dog. Okay. So you see, and I like photography. So there's all kinds of things that you can do that you enjoy, right. but you're going to start repairing your brain and you can start repairing your brain. I mean, I see, I see results in just a few months. Hmm. Okay. It's the same type of process that people would work if they've had a stroke to try to rebuild and get use of their hands and arms back. And it's, it works. And it works. But, and it's, it's very I simple. I mean, we, we are yes. wired we are wired to be okay. We're, you know, yeah. what we do is destroy that yeah. wiring. And yeah. I think what, to, to, to make it simple, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Scott, but what you're, you're basically saying is get back to nature. Get back to where we were before we had all these chemicals and, and mm -hmm. drugs and processed food and yeah. and sitting at the desk for 10 hours a day and then sitting on the couch. I go from the desk to the couch, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah, get, yeah. It's, you might as well lay down on your desk. I mean, it's just, uh, <laughs> you know, but, but you hit it right there too. Multivitamin packets. And I, I did this one group of doctors and the doctors just started laughing at me. And they said, oh, that's just vitamin packets. That's just expensive urine. Hmm. And I said, really? Because Journal of American Medical Association recommends them now. Oh, no, they don't. Oh, yes, they do. Why aren't you reading the journal of your own profession? When they do that? 10 years ago. Right. Well, now it's been like 15 years ago. Because the way that we grow food today and the way we process it, it strips all the vitamins and minerals out. It's just that we're growing too much and it's all watered down. So if you ate an orange, let's say from 1970, for the vitamin A, today you would have to eat six to eight oranges for that same vitamin A. Yeah, crazy. And I take my vitamin packets twice a day, man. Yep. Abs my whole family is taking these things. Yep. I'm on. So, I'm on twice a day also. Yeah. I have yeah. been since I was 13 years old. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's good. And and the other thing too is is I've had people, their doctors, would tell them, "Oh, don't worry, you just pee it out." Only B and C vitamins are water soluble. So you'll pee those out. But if you take too much vitamin A, too much vitamin D, and I've seen people just go nuts, like, oh, I gotta get my vitamin A up. This one guy, he was one of my clients, uh, he started to turn yellow. 
And he goes, what's going on everything? And so he went to his doctor and they tested him. His vitamin A was like 10 times what it should be. He was poisoning himself because vitamin A is fat soluble. Mm -hmm. So it's stored in your fat and turning toxic. So, hey, take the packets, it's measured and, and do not, uh, don't go to a big grocery store chain and buy your vitamin packets where you get a hundred packets for a dollar. No, oh, no, 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 no. Go someplace where they've been through, you know, where they've been have been tested with U.S. Pharmacopeia. How do you know this type of stuff? Shackley, GNC, the vitamin store. I get mine directly from the Amen Clinics. Mm -hmm. And so I know what I'm taking is the real deal and it's the right dosage. Right. I don't mess around with this stuff. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 No, if you you buy the cheap stuff, you get the cheap stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Use that to flush down the toilet. That's all that's good for, or a doorstop. But you know, the thing is, is what I love about this is uh, ninety percent, eighty percent of everybody in my audiences, they're on psychiatric medications. And this stuff, if I spoke to a group of neuroscientists, I'd bore them to death. This is like common type stuff. It's like telling them grass is green. But when I go and I talk to a group of employees or at a conference where I got all these, these managers and supervisors and, and like safety folks, this is news. And they yeah. don't know that right. they've got so much control over their mental health. And, and I imagine I imagine you get a lot of pushback when you talk with, with folks like that because they've heard different things. Yeah. Yeah, I get some people and, and actually it, I've had folks that really get upset and they say, well, you know, uh, not everybody can afford a scan. And I said, I didn't say you needed a scan. I said, you need to do this and this and this. Well, my doctor said this. I get challenged on everything. And I'll tell you right now, I'm ready for that. OK, I've been a <laughs> professional speaker since 1994 and I've been really doing this session for like 10 years before I even put out the book. Hmm. And I uh, I'll tell you right now. The, the book, Healing the Human Brain, is about 250, 260 pages. Originally, it had over 470 citations. Hmm. That's a couple of pages. Okay? That's, so, that's a okay. couple of pages of, of references and citations. Oh. Yeah. Everything. I assume I'm going to get challenged on everything. Hmm. And so, so we cut a lot of them down because my publisher said no one's going to want all those citations. But I still got them. And I'll have people challenge me on this. Like 75% of all Americans say they absolutely are miserable at work and it's because of the bullies. And I get challenged on that. Oh, that's not true. Hey, shoot me an email. I will shoot you all the citations. I will never say anything. I'll never write anything until I've researched it. And I can't, if I can't enter it into evidence in court, I won't use it. Yeah, I appreciate that. Oh, oh no, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. It sounds like you've been through through the fire, and um... <laughs> I, you know, I do. I get attacked all the time, wow. and it, I get attacked. I do a lot of tolerance training, which means you're not going to pick on someone because they're different. Hmm. And I get told all the time, all the time, you shouldn't be talking about tolerance. You're white. Well, wait a minute. We should have tolerance for all people. It's not just about race. Uh, what about disabilities? What about people who are Democrat and Republican? Tolerance means I'm not going to pick on you because you're different. So, you know, I get attacked on that. I get uh, I get attacked because, well, you're not a doctor. Why should I listen to you? Because I showed you what my brain was. I'm the only one out there other than Dr. Amen. Hmm. Dr. Daniel Amen will show you this stuff, but I'm out there. I'll show you my brain. I will show you the photographic authenticated evidence of what my brain was in 2008 and what it was in 2020 and it's better now than it was in 2020 because i keep i am so paranoid over this stuff that i bought a hyperbaric oxygen tank i have my own oxygen tank in my basement hmm. it's a big story i crawl into that two three four times a week and breathe pure oxygen for my brain so um, it's kind of funny because I'll get somebody to challenge me on that. I said, well, here's the studies. Yeah. Most people, and I'll tell you, there's, there's, there's this great saying, if people watch Ted Lasso, it's actually from Walt Whitman, or it's attributed to him. Be curious, not judgmental. Hmm. 
what that mean? What it means is the facts only get in the way of a good opinion. I'm you sorry. Could, could you repeat that? Yes. The facts only get in the way of a good opinion. Hmm. People do not research. Yes. They, they, they take what they see on the media. They take what they see on God knows what. Well, a guy told me this. Whenever I hear somebody say, well, somebody told me this. Where is it from? Where is it, is it from? Is it from an official yeah. site? You'll hear this all the time where somebody will say, well, that's not legal. I get this from my clients. Well, somebody told me this wasn't legal. Did you get a citation? Did you get a law? Did you get a statute? Never believe anything that someone's telling you anything yeah. and never form an opinion on something until you've researched it, until you have something to back it up. Otherwise, it's just gas. You know, I've, I've always believed that one of the most important decisions that you make in your life is who you believe and who you trust. It's one of the most important things because so many people have gone down the wrong path and done the wrong things by listening to things that were not true, that were not correct for them. And it's it's an important decision. And I love what you say about verifying. Verify yeah. it. Ask for the citation. Ask where it came from. Is this yeah. based on research is a great question, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, though, there's great. The Internet is a wonderful thing, but it's also a dangerous thing. It's like a car. A car is a great thing. It gets us to where we want to go, but not if you can't control it. Right. It will kill you. And there's a lot of crap on the Internet. But at the same time, uh, there's a lot of really good more than ever before, there is fantastic research being conducted by the government, being conducted by Ohio State, Michigan, Cambridge, UCLA. And a lot of this is in neuroscience. If it wasn't for those cutting edge neuroscientists, not neurologists, but neuroscientists, I wouldn't be alive today. Hmm. I mean, I can tell you right now, I used to wake up wondering if this was the day you should finally kill yourself. And I thought that was normal. Okay. My son would probably be flipping burgers at fast food. Yeah. Instead of having his master's degree in psychology and uh, going on to be a behavioral therapist. Right. Right. So you got to research it yourself yeah. and every, anybody with an index finger, two of them can go and research everything and you question, be curious, ask questions. Be curious. Yes. Don't take curious. anything. Don't, Don't take anything for granted. Yeah. yeah. Nothing wrong with saying, where'd you get that? Or why do you think that? Or are you good at this or whatever? Otherwise, what we do is we perpetuate stereotypes. Right. Yeah. And that's a dangerous thing today. And we amplify lies and untruths. Yes. <laughs> yes. You can yes. find that on the Internet all over the place. And you, know, you can look at some of the social media um, outlets and, mm -hmm. and see that oh, online. We we. The internet is a good thing and it could be our undoing because I'll tell you, uh, Dr. Haidt, H-A-I-D-T, great researcher at New York University, uh, researched these teen suicides. Hmm. Teen suicides, kids under the age of 30, the second leading cause of death is suicide. He has found that that correlates directly with the advent of the iPhone. Yeah. Oh, you can't get away from the bullying. That's you right. Can't I mean, it used to be when, when you and I went to school, if there was something going on at school, it went on at school and you left school and you went home and you, you had your family, your friends, your pets, and, and you let it go. You didn't yeah. think it wasn't there. Now, that's 24-7. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, you are so right. And, and, and now you think the whole world is out of it, is, is going to see this, and it and it can follow you into your bedroom. There's no getting away. Um, it, it's like anything else. You would better be able to control it and not it control you. Yes, yes, absolutely. Scott, yeah. we have come to the point in this podcast of the lightning round. I've got some questions for you. Are you ready? Okay, all set. How has your entrepreneurial journey transformed you? Um, it's, it's my whole life now. If I was still working in-house um, as an attorney or an HR director or something like this, uh, I wouldn't have had the time to write books. Hmm. 
I wouldn't have time to do the research. And, and that's the one thing. For every hour of presentation, I promise you, there's 10 to 20 hours of research or development in it. <clears throat> so it's, it's not like I just get up and tell stories. There are facts and there's things that I have to research. No employer <clears throat> is going to want me to do that. So it's because I can control how I spend my time. I can do the research and I can present and discuss topics that really are my passion. Mm. Uh, awesome. And what most surprised you as a business owner? Um, I think one of the things that surprised me the most uh, I mean, in what I went into was I thought, OK, I'm going to establish this practice, first of all, to prevent lawsuits, not to win them, but people sue you because they're mad. So I combine my HR experience with my law, and that means tolerance. I'm not going to bully people because they're different. One thing that really, really surprised me. I mean, who could disagree with this? We should treat everyone as if they were human. We should treat everyone with respect. Everyone should be given an equal shot at a job. I thought, well, that's a message everybody can get behind. No, it isn't. OK, um, the death threats I got from that alone are absolutely overwhelming. Oh, amazing. Thank I'm you. white. I'm white and I'm teaching tolerance. That's a death wish. Wow. Oh, it, I, it shocked me. Yeah, that's and shocking to me. Most people don't feel that way. But uh, I had the Ohio Department of Education tell me point blank from the state of Ohio that I'm a bigot because I said that nobody should ever be uh illegally discriminated against nobody ever uh and uh they came back and they said oh no to make up for the past sins of whites against blacks we have to illegally discriminate against whites now crazy i've got that in writing i've got that in a text or in a, in a chat in a webinar and i'll tell you right after that i don't know who, who it's from but people go to the library and set up these accounts and they email me death threats or i get them in the mail yeah. Wow. So I tell you, when you start talking about, put it this way, think of all of our leaders for peace, people who valued peace, Gandhi, they were all assassinated. Yeah. People hate and they love their hate and they got to have a bad guy. Oh, let's move on quickly. Cause yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, that surprised me. But I'll tell you, 95%, 98% of all those people, they're not like that. Right. They're right. not like that. Yeah. 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 What unexpected challenge have you had to overcome? My brain. <laughs> My brain. Um, I, um, I, thought, I thought it was normal. I thought, oh, okay, this is this is how people operate. This is how, and 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 it's a lot of work. Had to change everything. I had some clients that were some of my top paying clients that I couldn't do business with anymore. Hmm. Just wouldn't do business with them anymore. They're just not worth it. And that I'll tell you. Now I feel really good. It's the best I've ever felt. I'm actually 62 years old. It's the best I've felt in years. If I had known this stuff back when I was 25, oh, I would have changed the course of my life dramatic, sure. dramatically. Sure. Uh, but I'll tell you, it's just to overcome that. And, but I think everything that bad that happens to you is a good thing. Okay. Because you can use it to learn and to grow yes. and to help other people. Right. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so what book has made a big impact on you, and who would you recommend it to? Oh, um, I'm an avid, avid uh, reader or listener. I'll listen to two or three audio books a month. Mm -hmm. uh, like, when, particularly when I'm flying or driving, I'll listen to an audio book. Um, um, I think probably one of the best I've ever seen, ever, uh, and it's just for the simple message in there, is Viktor Frankl. Victor His man, yes. Victor Frankl, uh, the, the, he was in the concentration yep. camps in Germany. And when he was out, he wrote the book, Man's Search for Meaning, yes. which is just about on everybody's list of the most important books ever written. But there's one piece in there that I think is worth the whole book. And in there, he's talking there, you know, he's discussing how he made it through all these experiences in the concentration camps. And he basically says, I always try to find the meaning of what was happening to me, that there's a meaning. And if I could find the meaning in what's happening, I can get through it. 
because it's happening for a reason and I'll be able to use this and I'll be able to use this later. And what I realized later is when you put the meaning into something that you really are passionate about or that you feel I can really use this, you're releasing you stress chemicals. Mm. It's that positive attitude. And so I don't, it, this was all discovered after he passed away. But I think one of the things that he unwittingly did was he was releasing all of these use stress chemicals in his body by common sense, by saying, hey, this stuff is happening to me now. These German uh, guards are actually more prisoners than I am. Okay. And they, I can do whatever I want with my mind. And so, so all these types of things saved him from yes. one of the most horrific experiences you could possibly go through. And I learned from that an awful lot in that you always think these terrible things that happen to you. Oh, okay. How can you use this? How can you use this as a positive thing going forward? And I can tell you, that is a great way, I think, to, to turn back a lot of the hate that you get from the three to five percenters. Hmm. Yeah, that that book and and Victor Frankl's story is is absolutely mm. amazing. I've I've known about that and I've I've heard about it for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. amazing, really. Yes, and really it'll get you through a lot of terrible things. Yeah, yeah. What advice would you give to an inspiring entrepreneur in your industry? Choose what you want to do that really lights you up, <laughs> that gets you going, uh, and and think about. OK, I just love architecture or I just love writing or I love the law or I love coaching people or something like this. I find out and I don't, I'm a terrible sales guy. OK, I can sell. But honestly, I never try to sell anybody anything. My whole logic is I'm going to give stuff away. Hmm. I love to give stuff away. I've got all kinds of books and pins and stuff that I give away. I've discovered and free materials. The more that I give away and the more passion that I show, it's electric and people want that. Yeah. Okay. And if I didn't give a hoot about something, they wouldn't want me. Yeah. So that is a great lead in to this question. How can people learn more about you and what you do? Real easy. It's a one-stop shop type thing. Just go to scottwarwick.com, S-C-O-T-T-W-A-R-R-I-C-K, scottwarwick.com. And uh, there's all kinds of free videos. The books are there. Uh, if you hit the, and actually there's a whole tab there that says free resources. Hmm. Okay. So you can't miss it. There's all kinds of free videos. And I just finished a session down in Cincinnati on uh, brain health and how to bring that to your organization. And there's a lot of folks have sent me emails that want additional information. So I send them the link right to the website. Hey, listen away. And I really like it because I can see when people are going onto the website and what they're listening to, getting a lot of people in the evenings who are listening to the videos. And I'm like, that's great. They, they are doing this for their own personal fulfillment mm -hmm. and their own betterment. And I'm like, this is really great. I love that. Yeah, super. And we will have those links in the show notes. Okay, cool. But if you're opposed to show notes and you're listening to this, it's very simple. You go to scottwarwick.com mm -hmm. and look for the free resources. Scott, thank you very much for sharing your wisdom and your knowledge with me and with our listeners today. Oh, thank you. I enjoy it. Anytime anybody wants to hear about it, I'm ready to talk. Super, super. Thank you again. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye now. Thank you for listening to Entrepreneur Journeys. Remember to subscribe so you catch all the episodes and check out the show notes for any free giveaways or gifts that were mentioned during this show. Entrepreneur Journeys is brought to you by Apexable, providing the insights, tools, and transformative structures to help you reach your business summit. I'm your show host, Joe Matz, and until next time, I hope your journey is filled with breathtaking views and successful outcomes.